Welcome back to Conarium. Before I check out this new place, I just realized that this is openable. It's stuck. Before checking out this new place, I just realized that this isn't openable. <laughs> that just looks like a toolbox, but instead of bolts and stuff, it's just filled with pills. Do it. On psychoactive plants, Sahay T and Diverse. All the members awakened without any problem, except for Frank Gilman. All of a sudden, his heart ceased beating at around 1.45 a.m. It was extremely cold and there was no detectable pulse. While I was preparing to perform cardiac compression, he momentarily opened his eyes. I'm unsure how much time passed since his heart failed to beat, but it can't have been more than five minutes. And then came the event that shook us all. The cause was the very words Frank uttered directly to Dr. Faust right after he awakened. I, I don't know how to explain it because his voice was muffled and almost indiscernible, but I'm convinced that the voice I heard did not belong to Frank. As a medical doctor, I can say that this is not completely impossible for someone in his condition, but there was something wrong with what I heard. It was a sound that no human vocal cords could produce. Oh, secrets. Is this that one book I found? No, I've already read this. The one trophy book? I don't know, I think you can look at trophies in the main menu or something? I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. I'm sure it's not important. Statement of Consent I hereby declare that I consent to perform my daily duties to the best of my ability, listen to the judgment of the expedition leader, DeWitt, or no, uh, Dr. Faust, and participate in a series of medical sessions as needed at the Upawat Antarctic Base. It's risky, blah blah blah, sign off on it. Okay. Oh. I could do that. This bloom really is out of control. <laughs> it's the incense, I think. I see you in there. Ooh, you have to crouch to get it. Tricky. I'm told everything started after the disastrous incident, or after that disastrous incident during one of the Canarium sessions, resulting in my heart stopping for a short period of time. On the third morning after the incident, the first of my mental attacks occurred. After an uneasy sleep, I am told that I burst into a frenzy so powerful that the combined efforts of three men were needed to calm me down. In my sleep, I was babbling in an alien dialect, of great edifices of light and shadowy mountains and valleys full of iridescent flowers or mushrooms. When I came around, they said the surge of madness died from my eyes, and in dull wonder, I looked at my questioners and asked why I was bound. Now Dr. DeWitt has ordered me to stay away from any further sessions until my full recovery. In their sleep, great edifices of light, shadowy mounds and valleys full of iridescent flowers or mushrooms. That is definitely what I saw at the very beginning of the game. It's stuck. It won't open.
Oh, it smells awful in here. Yeah, it's been so long that the food's rotted. I mean, based on the notes, I... Well, I don't know. Remember how the notes, there was a, like, at least a seven month difference between the newest note I had read and that storm warning note? But I guess if the storm warning note was written by everyone, then... It's not necessarily been seven months since anybody's been here. I guess we just don't know. I don't know, this food doesn't look like it's been seven months here. I'm, like, I don't know what seven month old food looks like, but I'm pretty sure there'd be an awful lot of mold. that in there? I see some tools. And maybe a flashlight or something? If it is a flashlight, it's a much smaller one than these. Once again, another thing that looks like a door, but there's no handle of any sort. Locked. Locked. There's the elevator. I'd be damn surprised if I could use it. Well, I'll be damned. I'm damn surprised. God. Look at this. It's an odd thing to find in an Antarctic base. Gorgeous. Let's not jump the gun though. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. It's stuck. Link elevator. Oh, fuck. Wonder what the links do. It's stuck. It won't open. I wish there was an option just to disable the main character from saying it's stuck or it's locked. There's no need for it. The door jiggling and all that is enough. Whoa. Little Ice Cthulhu. Statue beautifully carved from a blue crystal. It depicts a humanoid figure sitting in a meditative posture. The most striking feature of the carving is the octopian mask it wears on its face. Uh, I don't think that's a mask. I mean, there is actually an option, in fact, in the audio settings, for... Oh, it's not an audio? I guess it must be not controls video? Silent mode, here it is. It doesn't describe what it does here. I, I feel like it might turn off all of the character talking, but let's turn it on and see if it maybe just turns off the, like, locked things and... Not the general dialogue. 
I mean, it'll definitely turn these off, right? Yeah, that's good. I just don't want it to turn off everything. Some markings on a map, I guess. Temple, flooded caves, base. Provisional camp equipment was deployed to the underground caverns below the base without any problem. Submarines also work great. They're vast and maneuverable beyond my predictions. We've started exploring some parts of the underwater passages, but it is slow going. <laughs> so cool looking with the light just kind of like gently flitting across it. So nice not to hear. It's locked. It's locked. Okay, so link elevator, bio lab, or this room. Check out this room now. Glossopterus. It sounds like a dinosaur. It's odd, I can see my character's breath, and that down there, I mean, I don't really know what I'm looking at, but it doesn't look warm. So how can this tree survive? Surely it would die if it was so cold, right? Or at least it, at least it wouldn't be green, right? I don't know. Three exclamation marks, it's serious. Wait, what years were those? Derby Pickman Schneider Foundation, 1948 to 1949. Doesn't sound good. Can I close it? I guess not. That's what the handle was for. Ooh, which plant are you? Oh. What? There's a kitty cat? That was mentioned in one of the notes. I can't pet it. Dang it. Spectral kitty cat. Now, for a second, I thought it might be Morse code. I don't think it is. It's too slow. Or is it? Shit, it might be Morse code. There's some longs and some shorts. Hmm. Uh. <coughs> Didn't know that would happen. Didn't want that to happen. Am I gonna die now? Great, now I'm hearing things. Should I be trying to escape? Well, seems like I can't. Uh, let's see if we can deal with the noise before I read that. <laughs> oh, 
Oh god. Hmm. Oh, that leads to nothing now. Okay. Well, now's a great time to read this. Dr. Faust is very tight-lipped about how he came up with that strange exploration device he built long ago. You know, the only thing he has told me is that he came across some shunned and forbidden volumes about a device of extraterrestrial origin. But again, these sources do not hint that any existed on Earth except in the dreams of those who like to chew a certain alkaloidal herb. The sessions we hold in the meeting room to adapt our nervous systems to the alien impulses of the machine were frightening at first. If used too much, it affects the body to breaking point. But now I'm used to its non-human sensations. I've started to feel like the device is clearing my mind to make it absorb much more than ever before. I feel unconfined and much more receptive. But the most peculiar aspect of the sessions are that, because it is a shared experience, I am able to receive impressions, ideas, and even memories which belong to the other participants. Usually my mind wanders after the sessions end, and I cannot focus my thoughts until I have slept for several hours. That strange device surely disorients feelings and bodily functions, but I believe that what it offers is of immense importance. Samples of the glow shrooms. Strange pipe? Phonograph cylinder. Or that. Ooh, every little one I can read. Oh god. There's a problem with one of the don't know what that says. I marked it. Must be checked immediately. One of the... I don't know what that is. Egypt? New... Comp site was established? Waiting for new samples. Campsite. I keep forgetting you can click to do this. Well, in that case, what did this one say? One of the freezers. I've labeled it. It must be checked immediately. Three different markings around Antarctica. What are they? Perhaps there's other base camps? Oh, shit. Who is this? It's impossible to determine with so much decomposition. Well, no, I wanted to read that. We have finally finished excavating the monolith that was silently waiting for a soul to see it again, situated within the circular building we reached with the Link Elevator. That magnificent piece of carving was buried halfway down under a mound of debris, and most probably could have been written in the earliest pages of history. I cannot describe exactly my feelings for the first time when I stood aghast contemplating that gigantic stonework inside of those time-worn halls of silence. Only God knows how many ages have passed since its initial carving. 
just thinking about its age sends shivers down to my spine. Which civilization could have constructed such grandeur, now waving a forlorn goodbye without giving away the secrets of its masters? Furthermore, even though most of them are damaged beyond repair, we spotted some symbols resembling the rock art of the Sahara Desert in southeast Algeria. We don't have any strong evidence to suggest anything, but Cornell Blake clings mostly to the continental drift theory. In any case, we don't have enough data on its age, but it is evident that history needs to be rewritten yet again. What was that key for? Ah. And did I see something over here? Oh, I thought I... Oh, that's what I saw. A little flash of electricity from the thing. It's messed up. Hmm? Ah! Uh! Can we harbor ourselves on the safest shores for there are things that cannot be undone? I think you should retire to your room. I I am going to think a bit more. looking kind of shabby. Mattress is a bit, um, old. That's the sound of me trying to press the flashlight button, but there's no flashlight. Sounds like somebody knocking on a faraway door. Let me in! That sounds like that device, maybe. That does sound like the device. Humming behind there.
think we're back to relative normalcy. Journal updated. First Canarium event and a brief visit to the past. I'm at a complete loss for words. Simple remarks are insufficient to express my feelings right now. Was it a premonition or a vision? How should I interpret all of this? I don't know exactly. Suddenly, I found myself drifting into a familiar room. A room that was long buried in my graveyard of memories, scribed on epitaphs of things long past. So that's a Canarium event, huh? Diversahe, the legendary drink of the oldest myths. I heard about that elusive, elusive mixture decades ago when I was writing my thesis on Salvia Divinorum, also known as the Sage of the Diviners, an entheogenic plant used mostly, or en entheo, entheogenic plant used mostly in religious or shamanic ceremonies. For centuries, no one could gather any information about it other than its legendary mystical psychoactive properties. In some sources, it was the drink of the gods, while in others, a key for opening gates to places that lie beyond the conventional human senses. The sole bridge to be passed in order to leave the bodily restrictions of the flesh. Most scholars would kill even for a hint about one of its lost ingredients. That's something I was on the lookout for throughout my career. A new formula is forming in my mind. I feel like there's a chance for me to produce, if not the original, then a variant of the legendary mixture. Diversahe, with the new clues I have uncovered during my work here. Whoa. Somewhat humanoid in form, these sculptures initially reminded us of the terracotta army sculptures carved as a funerary art, buried with the first emperor of China to protect him in the afterlife. But judging by the writings on some of the boss relief, and boss reliefs, now we believe that these wooden puppets or golems were used to carry out some tasks for their masters. Just like the Egyptian Ushab... Ushabtu <laughs> funerary figurines which are the servants of their owner in the hereafter. We saw the golems in several sizes and it was terrifying to see the huge ones sitting in silence on the carved and polished rock stools as if waiting for a command. There are lots of gateways leading to dark and damp corridors that were mostly carved in ages past. Some of them were covered by strange ivy-like plants swaying back and forth despite there being no external force to move them. They seem to come from levels below, creeping through crevices in the rock walls. To stop probable superstitious gossip amongst the crew, Dr. Barlow, our botany expert, personally started to examine them. The first submarine explorations revealed what was lying in the underwater caves. The most striking features were the structures with openings in them, like doors and windows. They made us wonder whether those caverns had been carved underwater, or if they had been submerged at a later date and thus had become redundant to those who had carved them. So, depot's where I came from, right? Oh, no, it's just locked. Floor elevator, that's where I came from. 
I guess let's check out the link elevator. Perhaps I needed the lever for that. That didn't sound good. Right. I don't know if you can hear me, but I am trying to search it to the only way. Hey! Hey, can you hear me? Damn it! Who was he? Ah, is this for the lever? Yep. Link elevator has been set up. It can now reach both the tower and bottom levels below the base. Camp equipment and parts for the portable submarines are being transported to the first campsite. So there's the tower, the base, and the cavern entrance. Obviously we're at the base, so up or down. Hmm. I guess let's go up first. Oh, Christ. I thought it was a tower that we had built. Nope, this is obviously part of the uh, temple or whatever you want to call it. Ornamental metallic object. Amazing. Most of the ground level structures have been crumbled and rounded from untold eons of savage storms, and thus weathered into shapeless ruins. However, both the ground level and the cavern systems below are clearly displayed in these bas reliefs. The most striking features depicted in this grand panorama, I believe, are the tall, occasional towering spires, which somehow resemble a lighthouse. They all seem like focusing a light beam towards a colossal structure in the center. Hmm. Could there be some sort of religious meaning behind this? Or simply something that has a more practical use? I'm not sure. That's the light source of the lighthouse. Let's go down to the cavern entrance. Ooh. 
That'll be handy. An ice pick and an axe. Well, I think I'm going to save the exploration of this for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to explore the underground caverns. <laughs>